Hey folks, today I've got a really cool video for you. I have been helping a landowner here local to me build an airport, and he owns a Bell 47, also known as an H-13, also known as the Sioux, also known as the helicopter from MASH. And on this day, we got to fly it to an airport to get some fuel and then come back and take some pictures. And he even gave me a little bit of stick time. It was pretty awesome. This is a Bell 47G-4A. I think it's a dash 4A. It's powered by a Lycoming 0540 six-cylinder horizontally opposed air-cooled piston engine. That makes 260 horsepower. This one seats three. It has a maximum speed of 105 miles an hour with a range of 246 miles on 55 gallons and a takeoff weight of 2,950 pounds. It's an interesting helicopter and it's strange being able to fly something that you sit inside of with the same kind of view as a paramotor, but without the wind in your face. It was really bizarre. Now the owner here has a really interesting system. He built this cart that lifts the entire helicopter and puts it onto wheels that he can just roll out, out of his hangar and uh, take off from basically the, the parking front yard area of his hangar. It just got its own battery powered and rolls it out. Sure beats trying to lift the thing or putting it on its own wheels and teetering it up and pushing. So he lowers it down, backs it up, and now we're getting ready to fly. So engine startup sounds a lot like an airplane engine. It's pretty weird. We're waiting for temperatures to come up and then we're slowly increasing throttle on the collective there. And once we get the throttle up, we'll start to increase pitch and you'll see the stick moving around. He's increasing throttle and giving it a little more pitch on the blades until it just starts to fly and you'll see the, the cyclic kind of stir around. He'll keep the helicopter from drifting because we've got a bit of a crosswind as we take off here. And once he's happy with that, uh, increasing pitch on the collective will put us in the air and then we'll fly forward. Now this helicopter doesn't have the kind of power that you'd see in a turbine powered helicopter like a Blackhawk, so it can't really fly straight up. You have to fly through what's called a transition zone and that's about 18 miles an hour. So we'll lift up off the ground here You see it start to drift around and then immediately transition into forward flight. Once you pass about 18 miles an hour, you actually produce lift and then it's actually flying, which is really bonkers. So he's in control here. We're supervising this road that he's building into his property. So we want to go over here, check it out, say hi to the crew who's digging and moving all the dirt. It's really cool to see flying from the perspective of a helicopter, but down low like I normally would do on a paramotor. And here's the runway under construction. Don't land there yet, look at all those mounds of dirt. And a little bit of pitch back. And that moves all of that forward speed into vertical altitude. All right, we're en route. I'm asking a couple of really novice questions and he lets me take the stick. Now I have flown small planes like Cessnas and Pipers. What's interesting about flying the helicopter is that it's not that dissimilar when flying with good forward speed to an airplane. You keep it pitched down a little bit to maintain your speed, but if you pull up, you go up, and then if you tip left or right, then it turns left or right. Well, banks left or right. Very small movements required. So here we are approaching a local airport. They've got gas, and apparently we needed gas.
once we got close, I released control, he took over. Obviously I'm not going to land this thing, this was my first time actually flying a helicopter. Now, this next part makes sense, and I've seen helicopters do this before, but I've never been in one. You don't taxi a helicopter, you fly it to where you're going on the airport. In this case, we needed to fuel, so we've got to fly this thing all the way to the gas pump. This helicopter does not have wheels, so of course, when we put it down, it's, it's not rolling or moving anywhere, so we've got to basically in a low altitude hover, make our way to the gas pump, avoid all the other airplanes. I kept expecting one of them to start moving from the from the rotor wash. But we're coming over here to the gas pump and setting it down. Gee, six dollars and fifty-eight cents. Is that what's on the pump? Makes me happy, I fly a paramotor. That's expensive. Alright, powering back up after refueling. And we've got to fly backwards a little bit. I know helicopters can do it, but again, never been in one while it does it. Pretty strange sight to fly in reverse and we're going out the way we came in transitioning over to a field here just getting to where we need to go and this is cool I can't believe he let me do this it was really bonkers we are about to try low altitude hovering. So right now we're turning into the wind. And he's going to give me the stick and let me hover this thing. Now we're only about three feet off the ground. And he's got his hand right there over the cyclic. So if I do something stupid, he'll take over. You can see I'm just feeling what his movements look like. It's very sensitive. You do not move the stick very far at all to make changes. Similar to a paramotor, you make the control input change as you feel the craft tilt, but not when you feel everything move. So I'm reacting to the tilting motion of the helicopter, not the actual movement of the helicopter, because it, it tilts and then it starts to move. And if you react to the movement it's too late and then you'll start overcompensating so it's very small minute movements to the tipping of the helicopter now he's got the rudder pedals so this spin to the left and to the right is doing that to try to help keep us into the wind to make my job a little easier and he's also managing the collective to keep our altitude you'll see here i start to overcorrect you know, making these big stirring movements and once i realize that i start to tone down the movements making smaller adjustments it's really not much we're talking maybe an inch in any direction pretty bonkers so he takes over and we head on back to the field on the way there I think he was trying to scare me this is an auto rotation so if you watch the RPM gauge up there on the top left you'll see the rotor RPM drop hear the alarm in the in the cockpit rotor rpm drops right there or engine rpm drops the rotor rpm stays the same because he's dumping the collective he said the glide rate i think was two to one pretty bad so we're keeping the engine throttle right around 70 percent but it's disengaged it's not spinning the rotors we're just dropping and the wind is going through the rotors to windmill them and then as we get close here the pull up on the collective pull back on the cyclic, flare a little bit, give it some rotor RPM, and that's where we would have landed, but he brought the throttle back because the engine was still running. That was a really strange experiment. I mean, that thing dropped like a rock. It was, what, 
20 seconds from a thousand feet down to the ground so you've really got to have your wits about you when it comes to the helicopter when it you know engine failure is going to drop you like a rock on our way back he let me fly too which was pretty cool again he's got the rudder pedals and the in the collective i'm just messing with the pitch and the roll axis All right, and this is what we're here for. We are trying to get pictures of his property, and I am going to be the cameraman. I've got a little kickstand ring thing on the back of my phone case, so I can stick my finger through that, put my phone out the window, and snap some pictures as we fly over. A little bit lower, trying some through the glass. Trying some out the window. Out the window gets the skid in the picture, but you don't get the smudges on the glass. Hard to pick. Coming from a paramotor whose flying is literally up, down, left, right. Trying out a helicopter was absolutely insane. There's basically five things you need to keep track of at all times. That's the pitch axis, the roll axis, that's on the cyclic. Then you've got the rudder, the yaw axis on the rudder pedals. And then you've got the blade pitch, which is on the collective. And you've also got engine throttle, which is on the collective. And all five of those have to happen at the same time to have effective flight. It's really amazing how anybody figured out to make a helicopter fly. And then it's even more amazing that people actually go out there and learn how to fly it because just handling one of the controls was almost overwhelming for me. Coming in for landing, you'll see some shaking here as we transition from that 18 mile an hour speed into what is basically a hover check to make sure that the ground is actually solid before we touch down and we don't want to be moving. There we go. Down on the ground. If you ever fly in a helicopter, always listen to the pilot. Make sure that it's safe to get out. Make sure that it's safe to approach. And there we go. Safe to say I won't be forgetting this anytime soon. It was a really amazing experience, and I thanked the owner head over heels for the opportunity. I'm not sure when I'll ever get to fly in a, another aircraft nearly as interesting as that one. Anyways, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you back here soon.